Do you have your students create poetry in your classroom? No matter what you teach, from ELA to math, science to visual art, and everything in between, at all grade levels, I want to share with you five reasons to use poetry in your classroom and the easiest way to do it, no matter what you teach. For the best ideas and information about arts integration and SEAL, subscribe to the Inspired Classrooms channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. I'm Elizabeth Peterson. Let's get started. Poetry is great. Come on, don't you agree? Poetry can be sweet and rhymy, in your face and raw, and contain so much passion, so many illusions. It can tell a story, describe an emotion, explain a situation, or throw down the truth. But how much time do you actually commit to poetry in your classroom? Maybe you're not an ELA teacher, or maybe you just simply get bogged down with other parts of your curriculum. I get it. I'm an upper elementary teacher, and it's about this time of year each year that I give myself a kick in the pants and say, get that poetry going hardcore in your classroom, girl. Why? Because April is National Poetry Month, the perfect time to devote an extended period of time on the study and creation of poetry, or at the very least, to sneak some poetry creation into your lessons. You see, poetry is another art form that can be integrated into your classroom, and it should. Here are five reasons why, and then I'm going to show you the easiest and one of the most fun ways to create a poem in any class, any day, and it takes little to no prep time. Are you ready? All right, here we go. The first reason why we should be incorporating poetry into our classes is that poetry study feeds the mind. It gets you thinking. Oftentimes, good poetry is not cut and dry. Just like a good story, poems don't just tell you what is happening. It paints a picture with words for the reader to decipher. It makes you visualize and infer what is going on as you read. If you search for poems that can integrate with your content area, and let's face it, we have access to so many poems right at our fingertips, you will come across those that really make you think. For example, after typing poem about World War I, I came across this gem. It's called Reconciliation by Siegfried Sassoon. When you are standing at your hero's grave, or near some homeless village where he died, remember through your heart's rekindling pride the German soldiers who were loyal and brave. Men fought like brutes, and hideous things were done, and you have nourished hatred harsh and blind. But in that Golgotha, perhaps you'll find the mothers of the men who killed your son. When I searched for poetry about math, I came across this poet by Poet Laureate Howard Nemirov. To lay the logarithm spiral on, seashell and leaf alike, and see it fit, to watch the same idea work itself out in the fighter pilot's steepening, tightening turn onto his target, setting up the kill and in the flight of certain wall-eyed bugs. Many poems deserve a second or third read, allowing the brain to take in and let the ideas seep. Another way poetry is awesome <laughs> is that poetry becomes personal. As you read certain poems, they start to speak to you. You bring your own experiences to the poem, creating your own specific meanings and making it your own. This is something that can become real for students and adults of all ages. And when you find that special poem, keep it close to you. Do you have a poem that you love? Share it with me by typing the title of the poem in the comments. I would love to read the poems that speak to you. A third way poetry is so important is that poetry feeds your creativity. 
Creating a poem is an art form, and you learn all kinds of forms, or you can take your own. You can craft lyrical lines that flow to a rhythm, or simplify the beauty of nature in just a few syllables. It takes thought and skill, yet anyone at any age can make poetry. It's a developmental process in and of itself, so no matter what stage of life you find yourself, your poetry really will reflect who you are, your thoughts, your experiences, and your perspective. Poetry is truly an amazing art form. Let me emphasize something here in this fourth point. Poetry can be created by all. Short, long, simple, complex, there is no end to how you can write a poem. Sure, there are certain forms you can follow and rhyming schemes to match, but not always. Some of the best, most fulfilling poetry I have created, read, or heard is that which is straight from the gut. It's not always sing-songy, but it does have a flow. It may not have rhyme, but it rolls off the tongue. So introducing various types of poems to students in all grade levels is an important thing to do. That way, they get exposed to limitless possibilities and then are able to find their own voice. And now for the fifth and final point I'd like to discuss here. Poetry is something you can do forever. Once I learned how to free myself from the shackles of poetic forms and set rhythms and rhymes that were put on me during my childhood, poetry came alive. Now, I'm no slam poet, but I have a lot to say, and sometimes saying it with poetry is just the way to do it. I find myself writing a poem every so often for a blog post or jotting one down in a journal somewhere. I even enjoy writing a couplet or two, jamming to the rhythm of my own little rap. It's a great way to reflect on or to capture a moment, knowing that I can write out a poem and have it be just for me or to share, and that's kind of special. And that's what I make sure I do for my students, whether they are a third grader writing a poem for a poetry project, or they are a 40-year-old adult at one of our teacher art retreats. Let them know the possibilities of poetry, that it can be for any subject and for any time. Now let's talk about a fantastic form of poetry that can be used for anything. It's called Dada poetry, and it is so much fun. Dada poetry was first written by artists and poets in Paris, France. They clipped words from newspapers, scrambled them up, and then arranged them in lines to form nonsense poems. I love to use Dada poetry for all ages and for just about any topic or subject. You can cut up song lyrics and rearrange them. You can use vocabulary terms and create something interesting and new. You can cut up articles about your subject or collect your own stash of fantastic words to use in your poem. This poem is an example from one of my fourth grade students during our unit on erosion. We started with science vocabulary and threw in some extra words from our reading, mixed them up, pulled some out, and started arranging. And here's what came from it. Water meanders, flow with land, elegant and daring. Definitely, definitely try some Dada -da poetry in your classroom. Just trust the process and know that each student's poem is going to come out unique and amazing. And if you do try it, be sure to share a picture of the poem in our Inspiring Teachers Facebook group. And if you're not part of that group yet, what are you waiting for? You really should join us. So now you have some great advocacy pieces for bringing poetry in your classroom. And if you want to go even further, be sure to check out my independent poetry project ebook. It has everything you need to implement a quality poetry project into your classroom. If this video was helpful, be sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so I know to make more videos like this. 
I'm Elizabeth Peterson. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, keep inspiring yourself so that you can be inspiring to your students.